Hey everybody, Spiros from the Self-Help Photographer. Today we're talking about the shooting modes on our cameras. Now I'm not going to talk about the auto modes since they're all pretty self-explanatory. Instead, I'm going to talk about the manual modes. The first mode I'm going to talk about is Program Auto, which is the P on your mode dial. This is similar to Full Auto, but it is a little bit different. See, in Full Auto, the camera decides everything for you. But in Program Auto, the camera decides the aperture and the shutter for you, and you get to decide all of the other camera functions that are available to you. And what kind of camera functions are we talking about? We're talking about the ISO, the metering mode, the drive mode, the focus mode, white balance, exposure compensation, the shutter mode, and the focus points on the camera. Now we're not going to cover these functions today, but I wanted you to see just how much the camera is deciding for you. Instead, we're going to talk about the other three manual modes available to us. Aperture priority, shutter priority, and full manual mode. The first two modes are your priority modes, which allow you to choose between the aperture and the shutter as your controlling variables. That allows for the camera to read for exposure and set the other variable for you. For example, in aperture priority, you can choose any aperture from the biggest aperture to the smallest one, and the camera will choose a shutter speed to match it for you. And if you flip over to shutter priority mode, you can choose anything from your fastest to your slowest shutter speed, and the camera will choose the appropriate aperture to match it for the exposure. So when would you use these modes? Well, let's say for instance, you wanna take a picture of some berries on a tree, and you know that you want the berries nice and sharp and in focus, and you want the rest of the background blurred out. We know that to control depth of field, which is the amount of the image that's in focus from the foreground to the background, we need to control the aperture. And if we want a sharp photo with a blurry background, we need a wide aperture. To control the aperture, we would choose aperture priority mode. We would set the aperture to f2.8, for example, and then the camera would choose the shutter speed for us. And then we would take a picture that looks like this. On the other hand, let's say you want to take a photo of some fireworks. We know that to show the motion of the light in the fireworks, we need a shutter speed of about one to two seconds. In this case, we would choose shutter priority mode and set our shutter speed to one or two seconds and the camera would choose an aperture for us. And then we would take a photo that looks something like this. What this means is that you choose the mode that gives you control of the variable that is most important to you in the photo. So if you wanna control depth of field or how much light comes into the camera through the aperture, you would choose aperture priority mode. If you wanna control how motion appears in your image or how much light the shutter is letting into the camera, you would choose shutter priority mode. It's pretty simple, and most photographers find after a while that they have a preferred shooting mode. In fact, aperture priority is often cited as the most used shooting mode. Now my favorite shooting mode is an aperture priority. It's actually manual mode. Now manual mode is just like it sounds. The camera chooses nothing, leaving all options in your control. I know that sounds intimidating, but manual mode is not that scary. And back in the day, there was no auto. All cameras were manual. Now I shoot manual mode when I'm using flash. So to say that manual is my favorite is a bit of a fib, because if I'm not using flash, which we haven't gotten to yet, my favorite shooting mode is aperture priority mode. And the reason aperture priority is my favorite mode is because depth of field is almost always my primary concern. However, manual mode is a fantastic mode for learning in. And in the next video, I'm gonna talk all about manual mode and how to use it. For the rest of this video, we're gonna make sure that we have down all of our basic controls for all of our shooting modes. So when you're gonna take a photo, one of the first decisions you have to make is which mode you're gonna shoot in. And I confess, I never shoot in full auto or program auto. So that leaves me with three choices, either aperture priority, shutter priority, or full manual. In this case, why don't you grab your camera and turn it into aperture priority mode. Take your jog dial and spin it, and let's change our aperture to f11. And notice as you're changing the aperture how the shutter is changed automatically by the camera to match. Now let's switch to shutter priority, and let's change our shutter speed to one-fifth of a second. When you spin that same jog dial, you're now controlling the shutter speed. And as you're spinning it, watch now how the aperture automatically changes to match the shutter speed you've chosen. And the beautiful thing about this is it works the same on pretty much any camera that's out there. The buttons or dials may be in different places, but the functions are going to be the same. Okay, just one more thing now. We can take control of the aperture or the shutter, but we still have to be aware of the limitations of the camera. Let's say you're trying to take a picture in low light and you want it sharp, so you switch into shutter priority and you set your shutter to 1 50th of a second. 
The problem is if there is not enough light in the space, your camera will not physically be able to open the aperture wide enough to take the photo. You could then turn your ISO setting up to increase the sensitivity of the camera sensor to light and then you would be able to take a photo in that light at 1 50th of a second with an aperture that the camera has set for you. All right, that's all I've got for you today. Now hit me up on Facebook or Twitter if you have any questions. If you have a tutorial video you'd like me to make, let me know in the comments on this page and get out there and take some damn photos. I'll see you next time.